Good morning and welcome to our webinar on the American Rescue Plan, Homeless Children and Youth, which you'll see abbreviated as ARP-HCY. Today's focus is on part two, which all districts in the state of Kansas have generated an allocation for. My name is Tate Tateman. I'm an assistant director on the Special Education Title Program Services team at the Kansas State Department of Education. And I'll be going over some of the basics of this program and how to join a consortium for the majority of our districts and any of those districts that qualify for the grant themselves, but would also like to join a consortium. So I've got a couple of staff from KSDE that are joining us as well, as along with some of our service center personnel. And we'd really appreciate if you could make sure that you are muted so we don't have extra background noise. So as we're going through the presentation today, feel free to type any questions you have in the chat room. We'll try to get to those during the presentation and we will save time at the end to answer those. Um, and just as a reminder, this is kind of a general overview, just so we can get started on this program and get districts who need to be assigned to a consortium assigned to those consortiums. This webinar is being recorded and we will be sending it out on listservs as well as posting it on our website, which we will show you where this information along with fact sheets and where we'll also post this PowerPoint will be. Okay. So first off, what is the purpose of the ARP-HCY funding? This was funding that was put out by the United States Department of Education through Congress's American Rescue Plan. And it provides money to every state to serve their homeless students above and beyond the other programs and funding that districts already receive. One of the pushes is for wraparound services to address the challenges of COVID-19 and enable homeless children and youth to attend school and to be able to participate in all activities that other students are able to. When you look at the funding amounts, it does become fairly obvious that for most of our districts, providing those wraparound services is not going to be able be done with funding, but we still need to be looking at what services can be provided and how we can provide those services to those children as best as possible, as well as providing the necessary professional development for our staff. Another piece is that we know over the past couple of years during the COVID pandemic that many of our homeless students have not been identified either because of not being in school, or in some cases, we've had some families that may not have qualified because of the eviction moratorium. So we do expect to see more kids being identified going forward as we see more evictions, unfortunately. So for the state of Kansas, approximately six to seven years ago, we were identifying approximately 10,000 students each school year. During the 1920 school year, that had fallen down to 7,600 with very few homeless students identified in the fourth quarter when the COVID pandemic started. And for last year, the 2020-2021 school year, our numbers had dropped another 2,000 to 5,600 students. So we know we have more families that are homeless that either because they're homeschooling, avoiding school, or we've not been able to identify them, we've seen some drops. So the next four slides that we'll be looking at are the ways that we can spend these funds. The first 16 for some of our districts, they're very well aware of them. But for most of our districts that have never had a McKinney-Vento grant, these could be new. We also wanna remind districts that this is above and beyond other services such as local and state funds, our normal ESEA program funding titles one, two, three, et cetera, and the McKinney-Vento grants. 
These should be above and beyond that, as well as these first 16 activities are all activities that we can also use our ESSER 1, ESSER 2, and ESSER 3 funds to provide services to our homeless students. So the first five or six here on this first page, supplemental education services. So after school tutoring, before school tutoring, summer school would all be appropriate. You know, if we have homeless students that we've identified for evaluations, if need be to expedite these evaluations, we can use these funds, professional development activities, or that's one of the areas we definitely expect to see some of these funds being used, especially in our districts that typically do not have very many homeless students or have not reported homeless students in the past. These funds may help with health referral services, transportation to the school of origin. And we'll talk about transportation a little more in one of the newer ones, the allocation opportunities. And then also to get our homeless students into early childhood education programs for those preschool age students. The funds can also provide services and assistance to attract and engage our homeless children and youth in our programs that we offer, especially extracurricular or above and beyond, such as you know, AP courses, IB courses, um, CTE courses. These funds can help with our homeless students with any fees that might be associated with those. For and after school mentoring and summer programs that involve educational activities. As we're trying to get records for these students, these funds can also help pay for any fees or costs associated with getting any of those records. It could be educational or medical records. We can also use these funds to train our staff and train the parents about the rights and resources, because we want to make sure these students' parents know what their rights are. It also can help develop and coordinate between schools and social service agencies that may also be providing services to these students. And we'll talk about that a little more on a later slide as well. And then the last five of the original 16 activities that the ARP HCY funds may also be used for are pupil services, including violence prevention counseling, and referrals to such services for violence prevention, counseling, medical services. So it's, it's for those referrals and any type of funding that comes with that. Activities to address any needs that may arise from domestic violence, adapting and purchasing any supplies for non-school facilities to provide services that have been listed above, purchasing school supplies, including those to be distributed to shelters or temporary housing. So again, for our homeless students, these can go for those needed supplies for the classes that most students may already be able to obtain. So the districts may use these to pay for those other supplies. And then number 16 is fairly broad. It's other extraordinary or emergency assistance needed to help out with our homeless children and youth to attend school. Anytime we have districts or consortium thinking about this as a possible need, we really encourage you to talk to our staff, Maureen Ruhlman, myself, and we'll, we'll also be bringing on a third staff member to help with this program in the near future. So if you're thinking about some other needs that maybe don't fit one of the previous 15 categories or any of the next, it's definitely specific to your homeless children and youth, we can look at this category. And then with the passage of the homeless children and youth funding and information, the US Department of Ed and Congress added six more allowable uses. The first one is wraparound services, such for academic, social, emotional, mental health, trauma informed. We have a handful of our larger districts already have things like this in place. You know, one example I think of is Impact Kansas City, in Kansas City, Kansas area. We've also got some of our other large districts that have done similar things. So these funds could help enhance what those programs are already doing. 
because we know when we have families and students that qualify as homeless, they have more needs typically than just the educational needs. And so this funding will help upgrade those type of services. We also have called out certain needed supplies above and beyond. A lot of the PPE that these students may need hopefully has, will be purchased with the ESSER funds, but anything like eyeglasses that are necessary for school, school supplies, personal care items that would help allow students to attend on a regular basis. Because we know one of the big issues we have with many of our homeless students is truancy. And so we want to really help them be able to be in school to get all their education possible. I mentioned the transportation to school of origin earlier with the ARP HCY, they've added transportation to support school engagement. So extracurricular activities, especially on the academic side for tutoring and stuff, we can really look at adding transportation, possibly to field trips if necessary and different things like that. That's a pretty broad area. We also get questions, is that specific to school buses or district transportation? Not necessarily. We do see some families that have their own transportation but can't afford the gas. These funds could be used to help with that. So this is fairly broad. The next one are communication devices and technology needed for school engagement. One of the big things we've heard from the Department of Ed and their technical assistance is one of the pushes is when necessary, prepaid phones, especially for unaccompanied homeless youth, so they can be receiving communications from the schools. But this is still fairly broad. The last two are two that we would definitely say these are last resort when necessary, but they are now allowable. Is short-term housing as a last resort when needed for school engagement. And the example is a few days in a motel. We strongly encourage districts doing this to first look at donated funds from organizations prior to using these funds, but they are allowable for that. And then the last one, we'd say the same thing, look at other sources first, especially donations, but these funds may be used to provide store cards or prepaid debit cards that can help purchase materials needed for school engagement to our families and our homeless students. Another big item that's been called out is the ARP HCY funding allows for the state level and the local level to subcontract these funds to community-based organizations. So especially our districts that are receiving larger amount of funds, you would be allowed to contract with local community-based organizations. Could be a United Way, could be other organizations in your local area. We will also be working at providing some resources of who some of these community-based organizations may be whether our districts or our state contracts with them or not, we really want people to become more aware of what these resources are available across the street, across the state. We do know in many of our smaller districts, especially in rural Kansas, sometimes what we're looking at generally is our local churches and the Department of Children and Families are typically two of our bigger resources. But this just gives us some more options, especially like I said before, with some of our districts that receive more funding. Okay, so I'll pause there, see if we have any questions. Okay, provide a little more information for our districts. Kansas, through the American Rescue Plan and the Homeless Children and Youth Funding, there were two pots which totaled just over $5.4 million. The first pot of $1.3 million has already been awarded. Flow through, which went to 12 districts that 
participate in the McKinney Vento formula grants this year, received just over a million dollars and internally KSD retained a little over $300,000 for extra staffing and to be able to provide and receive professional development activities and also allow us some funds if we would choose to contract with community-based organizations with this. What our focus on today is the bottom bullet, our American Rescue Plan Homeless Children and Youth 2 funding, which is just over $4 million across the state. This is over a period of almost three years. These funds would expire September 30th of 2024. So we've received a lot of questions on how these were determined. It was a formula from the Department of, from Congress and the Department of Education on how, how we've done, how we figure the formula. So we had to use 50% based on the Title I formula. And so since in Kansas, every school district receives funds from Title I, every school district received funds in this formula based on that 50%. The second 50% was based on the 2018-2019 homeless data by district. We were to use either the homeless data from 1819 or 1920, whichever we had the greater amount of homeless students, which for the state of Kansas was 18 or 19. That was 185 different districts that had homeless kids. So those 185 districts based on a per pupil share receive funding in that part of the formula. And to get the final amount for each district, we added those two parts together. And then any district that received a, a allocation based on the formula 5,000 or less is required to join a consortium to participate. So that's what the next section will be talking about here. So we've had a question come up is how is school engagement defined? It is not specifically defined, it is fairly broad. It's pretty much anything that we can do to help homeless children and youth succeed and be involved in school. Because we know during the pandemic, this was a, one of our subgroups was one of the least involved subgroups and have typically missed the largest amount of time in person. So if you have specific activities you're thinking about, please feel free to reach out to some of us at KSTE. We'll have some of our contact information at the end. We've had another question about allocations. You should have received when you received the email for this webinar, list of allocations. If not, they'll be posted today on our website, but we'll be showing you where that is. But that, that was provided in a PDF attachment and Dean has also posted it in the chat as well. So you can find it there as well. So our next section is about a survey that you will be receiving either Wednesday or Friday of this week. It's a very basic survey and it will help us create the four consortiums for those districts receiving less than $5,000 or those receiving more than $5,000 that would prefer to join a consortium rather than rather than um, providing your own grant. We've had a question, does it have to be a consortium or can we just work with another school district to meet the $5,000 threshold? We, you're gonna need to work with one of these four consortiums. And one of the reasons is because so many of our districts have less than $5,000. So you'll be working with one of these four consortiums if you're under $5,000. So on the survey question, there'll be, or survey, there'll be seven questions. We have the first six listed here. We'll need your LEA name or school district name, 
your LNA number or USD number, the contact person that you want to be receiving the information about this program and the survey, the contact person's role and responsibility. So basically their title, their email, and their phone number. We would expect in many cases, this will probably be the current McKinney-Vento Homeless Liaison, but that's not a requirement. That will be the choice of the district. This will also give us in the consortiums a contact person if we have questions on any of the survey answers you provide, which would be highly unlikely. And then the second part of the survey is the consortium piece. And you will be asked to pick one of these three possibilities. The first one is our local education agency or school district is eligible for 5,000 or more in funding, and we will oversee our own grant. Our local education agency is eligible for $5,000 or more in funding. However, we plan to join a consortium for the, for the consortium to serve as the fiscal agent. Or the third option, which will be for many of our districts, we're receiving less than $5,000 and we'll join a consortium. If you answer numbers two or three, you'll get a second question or a drop down box. And you'll have to choose one of the four consortiums that we've created working with our educational service centers. We have identified them and we will have those on the next slide by region, just to kind of make things easier. We know most people are familiar with many of our service centers but we also know many are not. Just because we have them by region does not mean you have to select the region you're in to join that consortium. You may select any of those consortiums that we have listed. And we know many of our school districts already have prior experience with the consortium. So we want you to have that option. So the four consortiums, like I said previously, we kind of give them names for the region, but you may select any of them. It does not matter where your district's located. We have, have what we call the Western region, which is Southwest Plains and Northwest Plains or Northwest Kansas Service Center working together. Southwest Plains will be the fiscal agent in that consortium. We have one that we're calling the South Central region which is ESDAC and Orion working together, and ESDAC will be the fiscal agent. Then we have our North Central region, which will be, the fiscal agent will be Smoky Hill. And then our last one will be the Eastern region, which will be Greenbush. So when you get the survey, you'll wanna work in your district to determine who will send out, who will reply to that survey, and then you'll select numbers one, two, or three, depending on your choice. And if you select two or three, you will then be asked to select one of these four consortiums to join. So here's a website that we'll also put in the chat box, but this is our McKinney-Vento homeless website where we'll be putting the information for this. We've got the fact sheet and just some very basic information started. We'll be adding more. We'll also be adding the recorded version of this webinar once that is closed captioned and ready for publishing. Another way to get to that website is on ksd.org. Go to the subject index under H, click on homeless, and that will take you to the homeless website. The section for RHCY2 will be at the top of that page. We will also be adding a link to our pandemic website that will also take you directly to that page. And we'll be getting that linked into the chat here shortly. Thank you, Dean. So if you have questions, Please feel free to contact either Maureen Ruhlman, who is our state coordinator for McKinney-Vento, 
or myself, and there is our contact information. We've got another question on the time frame. The time frame: these funds need to be expended, the same as the regular American Rescue Plan funds, September 30th of 2024. Our feeling at KSDE is we want to take time and work and try to use these funds in the best way possible to help our most needy students, our homeless children and youth. We also understand there is a push from the federal government and somewhat from the state legislature to get these funds out quicker and get them spent. But we want people to look at and figure out what the needs of these students are or if the need is more of the educating our staff on these. And we've been working a little bit and we'll be working more with our service centers that are running the consortium. Also, once our new person who's gonna be focusing on this program is on board, they'll be starting part-time here in the next couple months and then we'll slowly move up to full-time by mid to late spring. They will be working with districts and providing information for this program, providing more resources, working with our districts and consortiums to find some of the best things possible. We'll be looking at different ways. We've already heard some good suggestions from our consortium leads and providing different professional development across the state. And we will be posting this webinar, which is recorded and posting it on the website, the McKinney Vento Homeless Assistance website, along with sending it out again on the listservs. So at this time, we will take any more questions that anybody may have. Feel free to unmute or feel free do this. Okay, Juanita's asking a good question. I can tell that she's had some experience with ESSER. No, there will not be monthly reports on this. At this point, we would expect probably annual reports. We have not been provided by the United States Department of Ed specifically what will be on the report. We would expect that you'll have to provide the expenditures by the 22 categories that we talked about. And above that, we have not been notified of any other data above and beyond what we normally collect. We'll provide any of that information as we receive it. And yes, Alan, we will be sending out the survey. It will probably go out Wednesday or Friday on the same three list serves the federal programs through local consolidated plans, superintendents, and our homeless liaison. So please work in your districts to make sure that you are providing that. And yes, since the consortiums will be the fiscal agent, that is who we would expect to be filling out those forms. So that is one advantage to our smaller districts, but you will need, be needing to work with those consortiums. And if anything, if that changes, we will be making sure to let people know. And another question about the allocations, there will be a very short application. You will be getting the allocation. The application will have a narrative about how these funds are expected to be sent a budget narrative that goes along with the budget. So again, for our smaller districts, the service centers will be doing that. We will also be working with the service centers because we know in many cases, they'll be supporting many districts. But one of the things as we get questions is, even though it'll be a short application, districts receiving more funds are gonna have to provide us more information because we'll have to see the plan. And one of the keys I wanna put out there is this is a plan. We know over a period of two to three years, things can change and we'll be working with you whenever necessary if we need to update any of those plans. 
So I'll give a couple more minutes for any other questions. And Maureen or Dean, feel free to chime in if you have anything to add that I have left out today. Hey, Tate, this is Ann Rath. Yes. Just clarify for me, um, the districts, if they choose to be part of our consortium, I'm, I was anticipating that they would have to fill out something to relinquish their funds to our consortium like they do with, um, say, Perkins. Am I actually, not clear? What we're doing is, based on this survey, that will be them relinquishing the funds. Okay, and then the service center would complete the application to say that, I don't know, Sublette and Satana and these five districts want to be part of our consortium. Actually, you won't even have to do that part. We're gonna know who's in your consortium. So you okay. can work with you and you'll basically just kind of provide what you think at the time of the application you'll be providing over the next couple of years. Okay, perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. I want to, this is Maureen, I wanted to kind of address, I, I saw a question come up in the chat about um, how fast an award letter might be forthcoming. I don't think we can put a, a time on that right this minute. I don't think we have enough information um, to be able to uh, wager, I guess, on that. Um, does that sound pretty close to right, Kate? Yep. Okay. And that's one of the things too, you know, like I said before, we have until September 30th of 2024 for these funds to be spent. Okay, not seeing any more questions or hearing anything else. I wanna thank you for your time this morning. And again, feel free to reach out to Maureen or myself if you have other questions. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your Tuesday.